Friday, March 14, 1975. Roberts Stadium, Evansville, Indiana. The NCAA Division II Championship has just been captured by the Old Dominion University Monarchs. Coach Sonny Allen is lifted to the shoulders of his players, and the crowd of ODU supporters begins to chant. Their cheer was a familiar one. You hear it often, but it is usually no more than an exuberant exaggeration. But that night, it was different. That night, it was no brag, just fact. We're number one! We're number one! We're number one! We're number one! The first postseason step to Evansville came on March 7th at the ODU Fieldhouse. The 20 and 6 Monarchs had been practically guaranteed the honor of hosting the South Atlantic Regionals when they edged Randolph Macon in Ashland 86 85 in double overtime. This night saw the first of five games that the Big Blue had to win to claim the national crown. As the ODU Monarchs took the floor here at the Fieldhouse, they had a twofold advantage over their opponents, the University of Baltimore. Number one, the Monarchs had scouted Baltimore. They knew what to expect. The Baltimore team was going to have to play a guessing game tonight. And number two, the Monarchs were playing here on their home court, described as a pressure cooker of the field house by the Baltimore coach. Some 5,300 fans were here behind the Big Blue all the way. Old Dominion was not at full strength that night. Alternate center Jay Roundtree had sprained his ankle the day before in practice. It was an injury that would keep him out of action for most of the championship series. But the Monarchs were not to be denied that night. They overpowered the Bees while hitting on 56% of their shots from the field. With this last second bucket, ODU took a 95-72 victory. Coach Allen was more than satisfied with his first championship win. Well, we just had a better team today. I think we have better players and we have a lot of them. And just a case of too much talent and we played very well. Were you satisfied with the tempo that you kept up in the game? Oh yeah, we won a run and we kept it up for 40 minutes and uh, it was a great ball game. What kind, of game, what kind of game did Wilson have? Well, he had his normal good game. You know, he's played well the last few games, and he shot well and blocked his shots, and he did what he's supposed to do. The next night, 5,200 fans jammed into the field house for the second meeting of the season between the Monarchs and the Yellow Jackets of Randolph-Macon. Memories of that 20-point comeback ODU victory were still fresh in the Monarchs' minds. They expected another tough game that night. The Jackets took the early lead and were up by six at 16 to 10 when Coach Allen made the crucial decision to switch from a zone to a man-on-man -man, and then the game began to swing ODU's way. By the half, the Big Blue was up by five, 36-31. The final had the Monarchs seven-point winners at 83-76. Oliver Purnell and Jeff Furman made the all-regional tourney team. Sophomore guard Joey Carruthers was selected as the tournament's most outstanding player. So the Monarchs had won the first two of the necessary five victories on the road to the national crown and had thus qualified to make the 800-mile journey to the National Division II tourney in Evansville, Indiana. The sun had yet to rise when Coach Allen, eight of his players, athletic director Dr. Jim Jarrett, and a few other ODU officials left for Evansville from Norfolk Regional Airport. We asked Dr. Jarrett what going to the nationals meant for the Old Dominion athletic program. Brad, you were at the game the other night, and you saw how excited our fans were. Uh, we, I suspect we're going to have uh, a thousand or more people out in Evansville, and national championships are what it's all about. We've got a charter plane going out tonight. We've got buses leaving school all night tonight, and we're just going to have a great time out there, win a national championship, and it builds support. That's what it does. And so they were off. Coach Allen and his players got in a practice that day in Evansville, to prepare themselves for their game the next night with the North Dakota Fighting Sioux. Evansville, Indiana, 37 square miles located on the Ohio River. Metropolitan Evansville boasts a population of nearly 300,000. It's a progressive city which prides itself as being the medical, cultural, and recreational center for the tri-state area of Indiana, Illinois, and Kentucky. The city is also the home of the University of Evansville, where some 3,000 students are enrolled and basketball is big. The university has been the host for the NCAA Division II tourney since it began 19 years ago. Well, this is where it's all happening, Roberts Municipal Stadium. You can see that the NCAA Division II finals were preceded by Loretta Lynn and Conway Twitty, and I have a feeling that country music show drew more people than the finals are going to draw. They're expecting only 5,000 people in the finals tomorrow night. The reason is simple. Evansville, the local favorite, was knocked out in the Great Lakes Regional. In fact, the field was narrowed down to eight in the quarterfinals yesterday, and by the end of the evening, there were only four. 
Only 2,000 people showed up for the afternoon session of the quarterfinals, and the crowd numbered about 3,400 for ODU's game during the night session. The small turnout may have accounted in some part for the less than spectacular basketball that was played that night. Old Dominion never really got going in their 78-62 victory over North Dakota. Both teams found it difficult to score in the early going. With five minutes gone in the first half, the Sioux were up by the score of 4-2. to two. Dakota employed a defense that night that the Monarchs were to see again and again in the tournament, the 2-3 zone. It hampered Washington's inside play through the first 25 minutes of the game, but when the Sioux began to fall further and further back, their defense collapsed and Wilson was turned loose under the offensive board. Washington shared high scoring honors with senior guard Oliver Purnell. They both put in 18. Old Dominion didn't play their best game on this Wednesday night, but the Fighting Sioux played worse. The Big Blue had just outclassed North Dakota. After the game, Coach Allen said he wasn't surprised that his team didn't play up to par. Well, you know, I think it's a typical opening game in a national tournament. Everyone's a little tight, and uh, you know, we didn't shoot that well early. We ended up the half shooting over 50%, and for the game, 50. So uh, you know, we won by 16 in the national tournament, and uh, we prolonged our season for at least two more games. So, you know, I'm happy about that. And uh, we'll have to play better tomorrow night, but I think we can. So, uh, you know, I think our chances are as good as anyone's. Captain Oliver Purnell agreed that the Monarchs at first found it difficult to operate under the pressure of national tournament play. I think we're over it. It was, you know, it was the first game. We got off to a slow start. It wasn't that, you know, we weren't getting good shots. It's just I think we were just a little tight. Now, it's, you know, we over the hunt, we feel like, and we'll be ready to play tomorrow night. You taking a look at Tennessee State? Did you get to see them today? Yeah, we saw them. They're big and quick, but we feel like we play like we're, we're capable of playing which we don't feel we did tonight, we'll be all right. With the victory over the Fighting Sioux, the Monarchs were assured of playing two more games in the NCAA tourney, win or lose. And this guarantee inspired many Big Blue fans to pack their bags and leave Tidewater for Evansville. The next day, they began to arrive by car, by plane, and by bus, and the ranks of the ODU boosters almost doubled. The Big Blue presence became evident at the official headquarters for the NCAA tourney, the Executive Inn, which had been claimed as Big Blue Country. The Monarch fans waited out the hours before ODU's 9.05 semifinal game with Tennessee State by taking a dip in the heated pool or trying their hands at the various games of skill and other diversions in the hotel's recreation room. That night at Roberts Stadium, the number of ODU fans had increased to more than 500. Quite a different scene from 1971 when only 50 Monarch fans made it to Evansville. Pre-game rumors had it that Tennessee State was now the tournament favorite. Additional evidence that one should not put much stock in rumors. The Big Blue hit the floor a different team than they had been the night before. They had their game plan down. Keep it quick, keep it composed, and keep control. They did just that. They outplayed, outhustled, and outmanned the Tigers 77-60. Sophomore forward Jeff Furman led Old Dominion scoring with 18, and he felt that the Monarchs were more composed against Tennessee State than they had been against the Fighting Sioux. Last night I was a little tired myself, um, but tonight we just decided we had to play basketball, and um, we knew we had to rebound because they're a very physical team, and so I just, all of us just concentrated on going to the boards and not really fast break the night, which um, score shows because we didn't really, we usually score like 87, 90 points a game, but tonight we really concentrated on rebounding well instead of letting Wilson do it all. For Coach Sonny Allen, it was now four down and one to go. Well, you know, we played good, good enough last night to win by 16, and uh, I think I told you then we could play better, and I knew we'd have to because Tennessee State's a good ball club, but we played an excellent ball game. Uh, great on defense, uh, held our own on the boards, and the fast break was uh, devastating there a time or two, and... Uh, uh, excellent ball game for us, and uh, we should be ready tomorrow night. How do you feel going into the finals tomorrow night compared to how you felt going in against Evansville in 1971? Yeah, that's been so long ago, I can't remember. But, you know, I'm always confident. I feel we can win uh, all the time, but I, I know that we have to play well and do certain things, and uh, if we do it tomorrow night, we'll be national champs. Uh, if we play bad, then I'm not sure because uh, New Orleans is a good ball club. Uh, you know, they're in the national championship game, so you know they're good. And, uh, but I think if we do what we're capable of, we can win it. And uh, like I say, I always feel confident. This was the big one, the championship game. Old Dominion was here once before. In the finals of the 1971 NCAA Division II tournament, the Monarchs finished second to an Evansville team that enjoyed more than a slight home court advantage. Only one team that had finished second had ever come back to claim the top spot in the Division II tournament before. 
and that was Kentucky Wesleyan who came in second in 1957 and came back to take the title nine years later in 1966. In the 1975 finals, the Big Blue faced a strong, fast New Orleans privateer squad, a large-sized challenge standing between the Monarchs and the cherished Division II crown. With New Orleans, you could never be quite sure you had it wrapped up. Assumption had learned that lesson the night before when they blew a big lead to lose to the privateers in overtime. The championship game was tight all the way. The New Orleans offense was quick. They played a hustling, desperate game. The privateers got off 15 more shots from the field than Old Dominion, but the Monarchs were six percentage points more accurate, shooting 50% to New Orleans 44, and that was the difference. Old Dominion led at the half 44-38, but after the intermission, a young man by the name of Wilbur Holland got the hot hand and tied it up for the privateers at 56 apiece with almost 14 minutes left. The remainder of the game was a real nail-biter. With six minutes left, the Monarchs collected two important steals, which helped propel ODU to a six-point lead. But with just a few seconds left, that had been shaved to two. Joey Carruthers missed the first of a one-and-one -one opportunity. With seven seconds left, the Privateers brought the ball down the floor and tried a last-second shot. It was no good, and the Monarchs were the national champions by the score of 76-74. Monarchs had set several records along with winning the championship. They'd tied their longest winning streak at 15. They had their best season at 25 and 6. And Jeff Furman set an ODU record for foul shooting accuracy in one season at 86.8%. We took our cameras into the locker room for some post-game interviews and had a little trouble getting in. We looked first for senior captain Oliver Purnell. He had scored 86 points during the five-game championship series. He was 54% from the floor and very happy. It's a great team. It's a confident team. They came back and hit some bombs. They got up, but we never folded. We got on with that press real quick. Got, I think we got four quick points, and that was the turning point. We just held on. It's a super team. A super team. Next, we talked with Joey Carruthers, who made the all-national tourney team. He had 62 points in postseason play and 43 assists. No, you all played a great game. Yeah, I tell you, it's the greatest team I've ever played for. We just gave a super team effort. We hustled all the way, you know, we hit the open shots, and everybody contributed. It's, it's, that's the way it's been all year. We got great team unity. And I tell you, I can't say enough for our fans to come from Lubbock and from Old Dominion. I tell you, it's super to have people come 15 hours on the road to support you like they have. Yeah, it's just great. You know, the coverage we've been getting and the, uh, the coach, uh, Old Dominion, Norfolk, Tidewater, everything, baby. It's great to play like that. We really love it. And of course, we talked with Wilson Washington, the tournament's most outstanding player. He scored 69 points in the five games, had 54 rebounds and 23 block shots. Old Dominion, Norfolk, Virginia. Let's go. All right. Were you worried out there at all? No. Never. We got we have too good of a team to be worried. Uh, we got too much depth. Like our bench is great, like we can substitute, nothing ever really happens as far as we just explode. Oh, it may be hard to believe, but I think Sonny Allen was even happier than Wilson Washington. 
Well, Coach, what you got there? This is championship ball. Yeah, it's a great feeling, and uh, I think we deserve it. You know, we came uh, a long way. We won 25 ball games, and the kids have worked hard. The fans have supported us, and uh, we've won 15 in a row. We deserve to be national champs. After 10 years, it means a lot. Yeah, it's, it seems like a long time ago, but uh, we're looking back. It hadn't been that long, so uh, I look forward to 10 more. What else can you do? Now, to win it again next year.